Hey everyone, it's Laura from the blog OurEarlyHouse.com and today I'm going to be doing another cook with me video and I'm going to be giving you an update on my freezer meals. It has been a little over two weeks since I posted my monthly bulk cooking freezer meal video. And so that means it's been three weeks since I made them. And I have used several of those meals. I still have several more in my freezer. And I had a lot of comments and people asking for an update on that and just let me know or to let you guys know how they went, um, if I enjoyed doing it that way. So I thought I would give you guys a little update. I'm also gonna be cooking one of the those meals in this video today. So in this video, I'm doing a what we eat in a day video. I'm gonna be sharing our breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the lunch from um, the video for today is gonna to be one of my freezer meals. So in my freezer meal um, video, several of them were more like part of a meal. So I did this teriyaki chicken where I had it all marinating and all I had to do was just cook it up in my cast iron skillet and I said I was going to be adding some rice or broccoli to that so that's the meal that's going to be in this lunch today. So far I have really been loving having those meals. I will admit that day of cooking an entire day that many meals was really really hard. It was a lot of work. Um, my husband was helping me with the kids so I didn't have the kids kind of all around me. I was just able to spend the day cooking which was really nice um, but I have to say it's been, it's actually been really nice. So I've been using them mostly for lunches because it seems like lunch just sneaks up on us. We have breakfast, we do our normal like morning chores, we do school and then it's lunchtime and I'm like, ah, what's for lunch? And so I've been pulling something out of the freezer to have a lunch ready to go. Typically I pull it out in the morning, let it defrost and then I just have to bake it, warm it up or like heat up some soup and that's been really nice. So I haven't necessarily been using them at every single meal. I'm kind of like holding on to them, like only using them in emergencies because I don't want them to run out because it is nice having these healthy go-to meals that are in the freezer. But um, so I haven't used them like all in a row and you know I'm obviously still doing some cooking but it has taken the load off because we do eat three meals from scratch from home every single day I mean there's occasion that we go out or we're at my mom's house every Sunday and she cooks for us but um, the other six days we're at home most of the time eating so it just feels like I'm constantly having to cook so having about 30 meals in my freezer to pull from really it has been very nice we've been using them and like I said I probably still have 10 or so meals left in there and I will just continue to use them as we go I haven't had any issues with the way that I Stored them. I had people ask if I had any bags break. If you go back and watch the video, I think it was my buffalo chicken chili. The bag had a hole in it. Everybody um, noticed that, and I did not notice it until my editor sent the video back to me. And I was watching, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that <laughs> bag has a hole, and it. it's like dripping out everywhere." I didn't even notice it. But once it was frozen, we actually already ate that one, and it was totally fine. But we haven't had any issues of any bags breaking. Um, I also had some people mention that it would be better to use glass. I do agree. I don't love using plastic. I don't use any plastic containers or cookware or anything like that. I don't use a microwave. I don't microwave. And if I was to use a microwave, well, I guess you have to use plastic. I don't really know. I don't, I don't use glass. I don't use a microwave. Um, we do have one in this house. In our last house, we didn't even have one. In fact, we moved into this new house. My kids were like, mom, what's that? I'm like, it's a microwave. Side note, that was pretty funny. We use mostly cast iron, um, stainless steel, my Dutch oven, things like that. But the the freezer meals, I wouldn't have had enough room if I had everything in glass jars in my freezer. So the bags were a really good option because they can lay flat. So um, I don't love putting food in really hot bags, but if it's cool, um, I don't, I don't know. There's probably a way better way to do it. That's just what worked well for me and we haven't had any issues. But going back, I would probably do this again. You guys seem to all really love that video. So maybe I'll do another one in a couple of months. I really did love it. And I had some people mention, and I thought this was a brilliant idea. Whenever you are cooking, just to cook a double or triple batch of something and then freeze it. So then there's not this one day where you're cooking all day long, but just every time that you cook a meal or maybe every other, every other time or something to um, make an extra one to freeze. And I thought that was a really, really good idea. So. That's something I might do in the future, but I definitely think I'll be doing some more freezer meal 
um, videos because you guys all seem to like them and we are loving having some extra meals in the freezer to make cooking a little less of a job here. All right, so now let's jump into this video and I'm just gonna show you what we had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and show you how I prepared one of my freezer meals. For breakfast, I made homemade biscuits and sausage gravy. This meal is actually a lot easier than what I thought it would be. I guess this is something that I think like, oh, this is only for Sunday mornings or real special occasions, but making homemade gravy and biscuits is actually very, very simple. So I just started off by browning some sausage. I did two pounds because my family really likes this and I'm never scared to have leftovers. If I'm lucky enough to have leftovers, that's great. We'll eat it again later. Once the meat was completely browned, I sprinkled it with some flour. I stirred in the flour and then I added in some milk to make the gravy. We are fortunate enough to get raw milk from my sister's farm and so I feel really good about serving this to my family because this meat is actually from my little sister who has a cattle and hog farm. This meat is organic and she pasture raised them so it's nice healthy good quality meat and then the milk comes straight from my sister and so we have high quality foods that I feel really good about feeding my family. Once I poured the milk in, I just let the gravy simmer to thicken. And while the gravy was doing that, I started making my biscuits by mixing together some baking powder, flour, and salt. I then shredded some butter and added in some milk. actually using one of my freezer meals. This is my teriyaki chicken that I made and I'm gonna be serving some risotto with it. So the reason why I like to make risotto over just making regular rice is because I can use a lot more bone broth. I try to get my family as much bone broth as we can, especially during these cooler months to keep the immune systems boosted. And so with this recipe, I can use 10 cups of bone broth to just two cups of rice. It's a little bit more high maintenance because I have to stand here and stir it and add in more bone broth and kind of keep stirring it as it absorbs into the rice, but it's so worth it. It makes a really creamy, delicious side to any type of meal. It's even really good just on its own with a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. While my rice was cooking, I poured my teriyaki chicken into my cast iron skillet. Now this meat was not cooked when I made this in my freezer meal, so I just had to cook it over medium heat until the chicken was cooked through. I also got a couple bags of frozen broccoli and put that in a cast iron skillet, seasoned it with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, and I roasted that in the oven while I was cooking my chicken and rice. For dinner, I had a brisket thawing out and so I just made a dry rub and seasoned the brisket with that and then I seared it on all four sides in my Dutch oven. Here on all sides, I made a sauce to add to my brisket to cook it in. I just did some water, some apple cider vinegar, a little bit of coconut aminos, red rind vinegar, and some sugar-free ketchup. I just kind of flipped the brisket around in the sauce, put the lid on, and then I cooked this on low for several hours. two 
two hours of it being in the oven, I chopped up some onions and I added the onions, carrots, and some little new potatoes and some fresh parsley into the Dutch oven to cook with it the remaining hour. So then we would have some vegetables to go along with the brisket. When it was finished, I pulled the brisket out of the Dutch oven and sliced it up. And then I just served this with the vegetables and a little bit of the homemade sauce that I made drizzled over top of the meat and the potatoes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it gave you some new meal inspiration. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I get out a new video every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.